Hello, my name is Lance Sherry, and uh, this is the program called Mastering the Encosi System Engineering Handbook in preparation for the Encosi System Engineering Professional Exam. This is the first of a little over 60 videos. Yes, 60 videos. Um, this, this, is, this first video covers systems, life cycles, and the need for the system engineering life cycle processes and activities as defined in the INCOSI System Engineering Handbook. The learning objectives for this uh, introductory video are what is a system? What are system life cycles? Why do we need system engineering life cycle processes and activities as defined in the INCOSI System Engineering Handbook? the number of SE life cycle processes and activities, uh, hint it's 59 as defined in the handbook, and um, the groups of these life cycle processes and activities, uh, which is seven. So the 59 life cycle processes and activities are grouped into seven categories or seven groups. So those are the learning objectives for this uh, short video. First topic is uh, is what is a system. Um, so I think we all agree that the system is a whole entity that's composed of interacting parts. Um, so what makes these systems complex is they can have a significantly high number of, of components of parts, and those components are not uniform or homogeneous. They can be hardware, software, firmware. Uh, they can be processes, people, information, facilities, services. So any nature of components that, that uh, work together to create a system. Um, so a large number of components, and then these co components are not homogeneous. And then third um, characteristic that makes these systems complex is the fact that these parts interact with each other. So they're not just a static interaction, but a dynamic interaction. And it's that interaction that creates uh, complexity. So these systems operate in a life cycle. Uh, they're conceived um, in the beginning in the, what's called the conceptual phase. Uh, they go through development and end up in production and utilization. And then subsequently, uh, these systems are retired. There are a large number of ways of thinking about the life cycle, depending on the kind of system that's, that's being developed. Um, this is uh, figure 3.3 from the System Engineering Handbook, and it's kind of a running list of all the different life cycles that are used by the Department of Defense, by NASA, the Department of Energy. Those are the three uh, life cycles at the bottom. And then on the, the top is uh, the second one is the uh, high tech commercial systems integrator and the high tech uh, commercial manufacturer. All of these processes can be summarized by the generic life cycle process as defined by ISO and IEEE. And there are six stages of that. Um, so the first stage is the concept stage uh, where the system is conceived and um, initially scoped out. Um, the second stage is the development stage. That's followed by the production stage where the system is, is built and produced, manufactured, and then it goes into utilization that is supported by the support stage, no pun intended. And then finally, the system uh, goes into a retirement stage. Um, so the six stages, concept, development, production, utilization, support, and retirement. And of course, as system engineers, we are responsible for managing this, this complete life cycle. Um, two of the most critical tasks that system engineers are responsible for is something called the preliminary design review. And that is a gate, a checkpoint, uh, to go from the concept stage to the development stage. So the uh, system engineers would coordinate amongst all the suppliers and all the components and uh, developers of the components and make sure that we have a system that will meet the, the needs and that we can uh, build it uh, on time, on cost, and with the required quality. So once uh, that the um, 
the project is approved, then the next st stage is to go into the development stage. And uh, that's the actual process of doing the hard engineering work to come up with a manufacturable product. At the end of that stage, there's something called the critical design review that takes place. And uh, that's to make sure that before we go into production, that we've crossed all the T's, dotted all the I's, and we have a, a, a good system design. Um, of course, there are lots of variations of all of this, um, but that's the generic life cycle and the two key responsibilities uh, of system engineers. So the, the system engineering kind of sits at this, at this nexus of uh, quality and the performance of the system, but also managing the cost and schedule for, for development. And so uh, the INCOSI handbook has these uh, two diagrams. The one on the left kind of emphasizes the point that the system engineers have to manage the cost and the schedule uh, throughout the life cycle. And then the uh, figure on the right hand side points out that the work that's done in the initial phases, the concept and the design phase, have big impacts in the later phase. So um, um, it is a lot cheaper to identify a bug in the early phase than it is to, do, to identify and fix a bug that's in production, for example. So these, the system engineers have to kind of uh, manage this quality cost schedule, and that's an important responsibility that they, uh, that they have. Um, so to kind of emphasize that point, uh, figure 3-4 in the system engineering handbook has our favorite uh, cartoon, uh, um, Dilbert. And um, in this cartoon, um, you kind of get the sense for the issues of not only managing the um, the requirements and the design of the system, but also the, uh, the staffing and the, um, the, the development process. And in this case, the uh, pointy-haired manager says, Wally, we don't have time to gather the product requirements ahead of time. I want you to start designing the product anyway. Otherwise, it'll look like we're not accomplishing anything. And um, of course, Wally goes back to his desk. He pulls out a newspaper. I guess it, you would he would really pull out his uh, cell phone nowadays and he would be reading the news, catching up on social media, and he thinks to himself, of all my projects, I like the doomed ones the best. So, so we've got these, uh, these complex systems that we've talked about with uh, lots of components, non-homogeneous components and interaction between the components. And then we have these complex life cycles with at least six stages, concept, development, production, utilization, support, and retirement. And you put those two things together and you can't just do it ad hoc. It has to be a more structured, thought out process. So thanks to the hardworking and COSI um, system engineers, they put together the system engineering handbook to serve as a guideline for defining the life cycle processes and activities that will ensure success uh, in these complex systems with, with complex life cycles. So the handbook is this massive document. And let me tell you right off the bat, as you can see in the orange text on the bottom, that there are a total of 59 system engineering life cycle processes and activities that are identified in the handbook. Um, those processes and activities are organized into seven groups. Um, so let's go through those seven groups and just do a quick overview of the uh, processes and activities. And of course, the remaining uh, videos in the series are going to describe each one of them in more detail. So starting on the left-hand side, we have the technical processes. And those are all the things that you would expect engineers and system engineers to do, um, from establishing the, vision, uh, the business or mission uh, of the, uh, the system, evaluating the stakeholder needs and developing requirements, um, coming up with an uh, architecture, uh, designing, uh, performing system analysis, implementing. And then once the pieces uh, are starting to, uh, the components are developed and implemented, um, you, you go down the, the, the backside of the V with integrating them and then performing all of the testing uh, before fielding, maintaining, and then finally disposing of the system. So those are all the things that are clumped together in that technical process uh, group. 
Um, chapter five has the technical management processes, and of course, all of that is associated with developing a project plan and managing the, the project. Chapter six um, is the agreement process, and that's uh, the, the contractual support uh, for, for purchasing all of the services that are needed to do the development, as well as the, um, the components that will be needed for, uh, for manufacturing, uh, production, uh, and support. Chapter seven um, has some organizational project enabling processes. I think of these as kind of meta processes that allow one to, uh, to manage the workforce that's performing the technical, technical management and agreement processes. Um, so these are things that override the whole life cycle and ensure success. And then on the right-hand side in chapter eight, nine, and 10 are, um, are, are these cross-cutting uh, processes. So these are things that are used uh, throughout uh, the technical processes in Chapter 4, the management processes in Chapter 5, to a lesser extent, the agreement processes in 6, and the organizational project enabling processes in 7. So, for example, in Chapter 10, um, there is uh, Chapter 10, 8 uh, discusses reliability, availability, and maintainability. And, of course, those are uh, things that need to be defined early uh, in the requirements. They need to be um, uh, achieved through the design of the system, and they need to be tested um, in the verification and validation testing phases. Um, the same thing is true for 1010, uh, uh, which is uh, safety engineering, and of course 1013, um, the usability design, making sure that the system that's defined it, um, by the requirements early on is has the characteristics of sound user interfaces um, and then checking and testing those user interfaces throughout the remaining of the process. So that's an overview of the System Engineering Handbook, uh, 59 System Engineering Life Cycles, Processes and Activities, and they're organized into seven groups. And of course, in this video series, we're going to make uh, learning those 59 and knowing which group they fall into a fun, uh, entertaining activity. Right. So let's see, let's see what you know. Um, this is a good time for you to grab a pencil and paper, uh, put the video in pause, and see if you can answer these uh, questions. So what is the definition of a system? What is the six phases of the IEEE generic life cycle? Between which two phases is the PDR? Uh, between which two phases is the CDR? Um, how many life cycle processes and activities are there in the handbook? And how many groups? So please hit the pause button here and uh, see if you can jot down um, the answers to those questions. And when you're ready, uh, you can hit play. And uh, here are, are the answers. Uh, feel free to, to check yourself. So the remaining uh, videos are going to, you're going to learn the seven groups of uh, processes and activities. Uh, you're going to learn all 59 processes and activities. Um, and for each process activity, you're going to learn uh, the objectives, uh, the inputs, outputs, and the methods that are used in that, in that process. So congratulations for getting started. I look forward to, uh, uh, to the journey together. Go system engineering.